Hello everybody. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Absurge. I am a professional World of Warcraft player who mains healer for the Golden Guardians. And if you stop by here, then you're in luck because today we are going to be reviewing three different Disc Priests at varying MMRs for Season 2 Arena. Hope you guys enjoy. Hope you guys can learn as well. What are we fighting? The Windwalker Subrogue Shaman. Definitely think they're probably going to run at your Boomkin, but there is a chance they could swap to you, swap to your Warrior. There's a lot of targets in this matchup, so being safe here with Bulwark is not the worst thing. We have MC as well. We have short, uh, short Leap of Faith. You don't really need the MD talents, most likely. Um, you can keep the MD just to get this... Uh, your flash shield buff that gives armor when you crit, but you could also drop the point in the extra MD and get a point in Fade possibly. Um, just so that you have more mobility because obviously Fade can fade can be used to, um, you know, get rid of slows, get rid of snares. So being able to Fade often and especially if you're trying to push in for a fear is definitely good. Um, but aside from that, everything looks good. I'm playing Catharsis as well, Archangel. Uh, hmm. Definitely think Inner Light and Shadow would probably be better than Catharsis, unless you plan on getting a lot of damage if they go you. Because if they don't go you, it's it's kind of a bait, right? If they don't go you, it's kind of a waste of talent, but definitely not the worst thing to have just in case into a matchup like this with a cleave. But I do like the Arc the Archangel pick. Radiance obviously is really good, and then I, I definitely would suggest Inner Light and Shadow just because you could probably spam radiance and not really worry too much about mana or you could just play inner shadow as well and get more damage out that way if they're not actually going you but archangel on our bars nice we're mounting up okay we got a good audio bar here too get forward a little bit let's see Let's see how fast this game is. So I'm assuming you have Fury Warrior Boomkin. I'm assuming we try to kill the monk is what I think our plan would be. Monk and then Rogue if the monk gets away. Let's see what happens. We get sapped. Okay. Right off the bat, I would say the biggest thing here is Penancing was not really too useful. Obviously you're getting up your wheel and woe buff. Um, but if you're ever fighting a class like this, especially a stealth class, like a huge thing you want to do on disc is just get up shields. So you can shield your, if we go back here, you've renewed your warrior, which is good, but you can shield your warrior and then renew after. Um, because when you do renew, if you don't remember, there is a talent that reduces the CD of powered shield whenever you press a flash shield or renew. So it's open, you press shield, you press renew, you target your boomkin, you press shield again, or you can renew him to get the CD off then, because you're the only one that's not in stealth, you can definitely just shield yourself as well, just in case, because obviously they could just sap you and go someone else, but just, just so you have extra healing out already before the game starts. We get the penance, get our buff, we get sapped. I think we're trying to spam our dot. Our warrior still mounted, charges the monk, okay. This is Odin's Fury. We get a Storm Ball on the Monk. What are we doing here? We're trying to get our Dot out still. Up again. The Dot on the Monk. I get down the Rogue. He resells. All right. Press is grounding as well. So not the worst thing. Not the worst thing here. We got a Dot out on the Monk. We try to get a Dot out on the war or on the Rogue as well, but the Rogue gets a resell. So. What you could do here in this situation is just try to get your healing out. He has grounding down as well, so he grounds our penance, which is unfortunate. But what we can do here is we can definitely just try to get a shield out onto the warrior, uh, like I mentioned when the gates open, because they're going to eventually get CC and start trying to do damage onto your teammates. So if you can already get a shield out because it is an absorb, it's obviously not a direct heal. So if you can kind of you know, preemptively absorb some damage, that's always gonna be a good thing. But instead we get a kidney. Don't really have any hot side either. I think we PS the warrior. So PS the warrior, which is 
obviously not the best thing because they are going your boomkin but it's kind of hard to tell in this situation so we try to get a ps we get hex off this maybe okay we get the dome though as well so good on you by pressing the dome here um i have an idea that you're about to run in and try to get some heals out but a little advice here the dome was good great pressing your dome here we like that we like how you can just you know press dome on the bomb and everything's good and then right here we kind of stop moving well you have to remember maybe you forgot because you know some some priests definitely forget this as well but in this situation when you're on a disc priest if somebody is in a bomb you can still get a radiance heal by targeting your teammate who's in range or targeting yourself so even if they're in a bomb you can still radiance through it so right here in this situation what you could do because we are at the kidney and we do get the dome is we can simply just radiance ourselves. And if we radiance ourselves, we get a lot of healing and we don't have to worry too much, but we do end up getting one radiance, which is nice. We get cheaped again. We still try to dot the rogue. We're shielding now, great. Shielding the, okay. Is that our, was that our trinket? Okay. We triggered it blind, which is good. I wanna see what we do right here. After we get the Radiance, we have Dome down, we get Cheap Shot. We try to target the Rogue again. So whenever you're in this situation, you don't have to worry too much about getting your Dot up. A lot of Disc Priests think that the best thing to do always, and the first thing they need to do is put up their Dot in every single situation. And obviously this is not really the case because whenever you're doing this, there's always a lot of micro CCs that will come in or maybe people are taking too much damage. So you're using these globals on your damage and getting up your Dot which effectively isn't too good. So even in this situation, it'd be nice to just get some heals out. We get a Radiance on the bomb. He cheap shots this DR. Now what we can do is we can just put up shields again. Put up your shield, put up your Renew. Make sure we get heals out. You could also PI your Boomkin as well because your Boomkin's probably going to press CD soon. But let's see. What do we do here? We try to get the dot. Can't get the dot. I'm trying to see what we're pressing here. We try to penance, but why isn't our penance working? So we try to penance the rogue, I think. Okay, that makes sense. It looks like we're trying to pen the rogue, but he gets a vanish off. And then we press. We press here. We press Shadow Fiend. Okay. There we go. Always hard when people don't have uh, the global tracking. So we press Shadow Fiend here. Now we press Rapture, Boomy's dying. So we Rapture Shield the Warrior. Obviously Rapture Shield on the Boomkin is probably the best thing since he does seem to be the main target. We get blinded, Trinket the Blind, good. Pushing in, would have been really good to fear right there. Right here in this moment would have been really good to press your fear uh, before this knock. So we get out, we Trinket the Blind. We get heals out on the Boomkin. Right here, Triple Fear insane very insane i don't see a tremor down would have been great okay so he presses earthen the rogue duels you trying to get some damage out okay mind blast schism mind blast gets kicked okay so same thing as always it's if we're in this situation where we're kind of uh we're kind of just trying to do a too much in regards to you know trying to get offensive with damage and stuff if you're trying to get offensive and into especially matchups like these, it's really good to try to make sure that your your team is healthy beforehand, before you start trying to put up your DOS, start getting your Schism, your Mind Blast. And a lot of it is just CC. So even here, where we had this Triple Fear would have been perfect. Like this situation right here after we Trinket the Blind, this is a Triple Fear. We don't have to worry about getting our damage out. We can just triple free these guys. Maybe we shield the Boomkin. We get a heal on the Boomkin as well, a flash heal, or we just renew them and then we press PI on them. And then right at that moment, 
the momentum can shift and everything's good. So we get in cap, the rogue tries to duel us. And once again, if you if you did not know, if you are in a shadowy duel or a smoke bomb, you can still heal your team. So even in this situation, you can still radiance to heal your teammates. This will be good gouge for the castle enemy kicks us. Penance them as well, so same thing, unfortunate penance. We're trying to do some damage. He CCs our penance, which is obviously not that good. We lose our stacks from wheel and woe. Uh, we also lose out on potential healing, so pretty unfortunate here. Whenever this is happening, you kind of just want to make sure that you're you're getting into these moments of just focusing on healing. So in that situation, it would have been good to do. Uh, the Sham ran on top of us again, so same thing. Could have feared this guy. It would have been DR. He's 10 seconds off DR, but even a half fear in this situation can still force CDs, um, especially because your Boomkin has Incarn up. So once he gets out of the CC, if, your shaman, if the Shaman's already a little bit behind, plus he already used all his totems uh, with Healing Stream and Healing Tide, you would have been in a pretty decent situation, I'd say, if you PI the Boomkin here and get the fear on the Sham. We get knocked up, we're healing. A grip would be nice here. So we PI. Hey, what happened to our PI? Did he purge it? Oh no, so I think we PI'd ourselves on accident. Okay, so we PI'd ourselves, it looks like. We did not get the PI on the Boomkin, which when you have the talent, obviously you're, uh, I think it's called Twin Priestess, you're putting PI on yourself and someone else, whoever you're targeting. So missed opportunity here. Rogue's trying to push in. We get our Radiances out. Okay, get a Penance as well. A Shield. Swap. Good swap. Hopefully we don't die here. Now's the time to just press Fear. Good. We got a Fear. Wasn't the best Fear, but finally press Fear, which is nice. Now we get to do some Dam. Here our Kidneys us. Still Blasting Dam. And we're Blasting Dam here right now, and once again, we don't have Atonement up, so... It's always important to keep up your atonement. Make sure we're pressing shield on cooldown. Whoever's getting hit, you press a shield on them. Whoever's not getting hit, you can press a renew on them if you want to put up atonement. That way you can reduce the CD of your shield as well. And then, at that moment, then we can start doing damage. Because especially when we're fighting something like this, a sub rogue team. The sub rogues, once, they're, once their setup is over, their dance, their, their stun DRs, they can still do damage, but it's not as scary. So in this situation, the fact that you're doing damage here is great. It just would have been way better if we had a Toman up. Okay, so we dot the Sham too. We could gouge. Um, kind of scared here. Look, we might be dead. Okay. A kicked. Our life maybe? Oh, close. All right, so the first round is shuffle. Definitely, I would say the biggest, the biggest thing I've noticed in this in this one game is just a lot of emphasis on trying to get our damage out when we should we should just be healing. So a lot of a lot of emphasis on getting our damage out. We need to just try to make sure we're healing as much as we can. We're in this situation here because if you look and you go back a moment after we swapped, we never actually topped our HP. So we got the swap off, but we're not getting more health on ourselves. And obviously our teammate is going to slowly fall behind as well. So I would say the biggest factor is just focusing too much on trying to get your dot out, get your damage out. We wanna make sure that we're just spamming shield on cooldown. We're putting up renew to reset the, sh the cooldown of shield if possible. We're also trying to make sure that we're, if we ever have the chance, we get a fear. Um, and I would say that was the biggest thing. Uh, we have our root as well, which I don't think we got to use, but I would say the biggest thing and the biggest reason we kind of lost this round is because we just fell behind on healing. Just fell behind too far on healing. And I think if we can fix that, because it looks like we we obviously know our binds, we know how to press our CDs, we traded out both PSs, we got the swap off at a clutch time as well, so we're, good, we're doing what we need to do, it's just we're doing the... we're doing the wrong thing in terms of what we need to do, so... We need to get our damage out, but at first we need to get our healing out. So if we can fix that, I think everything will be very, 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 very good for us. 
Before we get into the next review, we're going to bet you have some questions about the new season. This is why our Ask a Pro forum is quickly becoming one of the best resources for any player looking to hit their goals in PvP. It's easy. As a skill cap member, all you need to do is visit the premium section of our Discord, and then create a post in our Ask a Pro channel. Then someone within our professional network will see your post and leave you a detailed response, even answering any additional questions you might have. Only skill cap members can create new posts, but anyone in our Discord can browse through the forum and learn valuable information. On our website, we also have a brand new course just for healers, which condenses years of knowledge from players just like Ab Sturge into easy to follow guides, teaching you fundamental tips for climbing rating. In the video description, you will find a discount link to sign up for skillcap.com, which includes a 400 rating gain guarantee while actively using our website. Check out skillcap.com after the video to start seeing instant improvement in Arena. Anyway, let's get back to the review. All right, here we go. Demon Hunter Mage. Looks like we have a Fire Mage as well. Demon Hunter Fire Mage, Rhett, Boomkin, Ressa Druid. Fifth round of shuffle. We have one win. We need two more here. Check out our talents. So we have the Fate Talent as well. Great, Archangel. Still think Inner Light and Shadow is a good option, but Fade obviously is a great option as well. We can stay Fade just to avoid CC. Back a little bit. What other talents do we have here? So Respect into Mind Games as well. We have MD. Awesome, because it is a Druid, so we are able to MD clones. So our talents do look good. We are playing the Shadowy Covenant build, so. All right. Let's see, hopefully the gates open. We press our shields. The gates open. What do we do? We run to the tomb. Shield, good. Okay, our demon hunter got Hodge. Unfortunately, we're kind of a little far back. Not the worst thing though, because they didn't follow up. So we got the dispel, which is great. Got a shield on him again. A okay, shield again. We get stunned into a clone. I'd say the biggest thing thus far, obviously a lot of a lot of little things add up to the game and what happens. So right here we run in, we get a shield, great. Now you can just put up renew. Put up a renew on your mage, put up a renew on your demon hunter because renew does a, a decent amount of healing I'd say for disc priest now. And on top of that, you're also just resetting the cooldown of your shield. So we get a renew here, put it on the DH, put it on the mage. We have our shield come back sooner. We kind of stayed back, which was fine because we don't want to get blinded. We run back in, we get the dispel. Good. We get a shield again. And we get Pounce clone here. So the rest of the Druid comes out. Pounce clones us. Unfortunately, we do not get a stop from our teammates, but this is where we get to rely on them. And that's the beauty of WoW. We get to rely on our teammates here to not die while you're in CC. We're still in a clone. Okay. Come out of the clone, we shield the mage, great. Renew the demon hunter, great. Radiance, great. Now we need to put up our dot, or we go in for the fear. Okay, so we go in for the DR fear, unfortunately it's overlapped. Put up our dot. Now I would say, so far so good, we trade out PS here as well. So, so far so good. I would say the biggest thing is that we need to just help our teammates, right? So our teammates are doing great. They lived our, our first CC. They're doing damage now. Now the best thing right here, because we are a priest and we can press this lovely spell called Power Infusion. So right here, our mage is pressing Combust. We PI the mage. We get Power Infusion to the mage. The mage is going to do ridiculous damage and hopefully they'll be our friend afterwards. We give him PI, that would have been great. And we have to also make sure we're tracking their cooldown. So the Wet still has wings on your mage. Your mage presses alter, which was great. He alters back. So unfortunately we overlap a PS there. It would have been fine to just press shield. It would have been fine, honestly, to just press rapture here as well. But he gets a, he gets an alter. We send first pain suppression, which is not the worst thing. Get iron bark as well in the boomkin. Everything so far is good this game. So unfortunately we get a schism on the ret. Now we're going to Boomy. So we schism the wrong person. Unfortunate, but it happens. The ret's dying now somehow. Gets topped off. Boomkin's pressing in Karn. So right here. 
because we still do have CDs, we still have Dome, we still have One PS, we still have a Rapture. Very ideal right here. Make sure that we press our Archangel and we press our Rapture because we need to live Incarn. So Incarn is very, very scary. Uh, looks like we do send a PS, which obviously not the worst thing. Our Demon Hunter Darknesses as well. If you ever have the chance to try and save your second paint sub, it's always, it's it's normally a, the better thing to do because you can rotate, you can press your first PS, then you can Rapture, or you can first PS, then you can Dome, then you can Rapture after, so, or you can even Dome and Rapture together if you're that far behind. So in this situation, right when we see Incarn, amazing to just press Archangel and we press Rapture. We just press Archangel Rapture, or we can press Dome on our Mage, hopefully he stands in it, and we can kind of stay alive here. Unfortunately, we sent our last PS, so we're not going to have paints up for a while. But we do get some shields out. Try to dispel our, the Hodge off the Demon Hunter. Amazing. Get a flash shield out. Okay, another shield. And it's the Ret now. Build ourselves. So we got to make sure we're not getting rotted down. So that looks like what's happening right now. We get stun cloned. Mage is still dying. Hopefully we might have to swap here. We shield again. Okay. Shield again. We get a powered life. We get a dome now. So we're pressing our heals, which is great. And we survived this. But this same thing that I, I try to tell a lot of people is you shouldn't be afraid that when they're pressing their cooldowns that you can respect that and press your cooldowns. You should not be afraid to press Rapture here. Because if we press Rapture here, instead of pressing our Paint Sup, Rapture is a shorter cooldown by half. We can also press Archangel, which is, I believe, still a one minute cooldown. So we can survive here without sending our last PS. And if we get the Raptures out here and we Rapture Shield our Mage, we Rapture Shield our Demon Hunter, we Rapture Shield ourselves, then what happens is we can run back right here to the pillar with a shield on ourselves. We're not taking damage. We're not getting owned by the by the uh, the starbursts that are on the floor as well which brings us to half hp and then we can focus on putting up our dot we can focus on getting a penance out for damage we can focus on getting a purge out we can focus on pressing our shadow fiend as well for more mana regen and more damage on top of the atonement healing we get but instead we kind of fall behind here not respecting the damage we get stunned i think we get cloned here so we get stunned into clone. We're half HP almost. Our mage is dying as well. We grip the mage over. We get a radiance. We get a shield. We get a powered life. And the reality of this situation is if we pressed our rapture and our archangel, or we domed and then and kept archangel or kept rapture and we domed instead and then press press archangel and then we got our radiance spam off, we probably wouldn't really be in this situation. Um, it also helps a lot that when we are doing this, we can focus on, like I said, we can focus on more damage, we can focus on CC, we can focus on getting purges, and we can also focus on what Boomkins are starting to realize that they hate now. And that's when people dispel their dots. So when you fight a Boomkin, dispelling Moonfire and Sunfire is definitely a good thing because it limits their, re their Astral Power regen. It also limits their damage done because they do have a talent that makes it so when they have three dots out, um, they are doing percentage more damage to their target. So if you're able to keep off those dots because your team's healthy, you're staying alive, you're rotating your CDs and you can focus on that while also trying to get damage out, everything slowly starts to, to fall into place and we can kind of catch up here. So dispel our root off the Demon Hunter, great. We get our dome, he presses beam. Now we press Rapture, so Definitely a, little, a bit late on the Rapture, but great that we did finally press it. Dampening's obviously starting to kick in as well since it's solo shuffle. We get a Mind Games, we get another Rapture shield up, we get a Bop, so can't get the Bop off. Little advice here, whenever you are fighting a team that has Bop, so whenever you are fighting a team with Blessing of Protection with Paladins, you can always, always, always press MD. So if you are fighting these teams, these Paladins, and they have a Blessing of Protection on somebody, you don't have to sit there and, and spam Dispel their buffs and hope that you can randomly get it because there is a lot of RNG there if they have a lot of buffs, especially against the rest of Druid. So what you can do is you can mass Dispel the target and 
every master spell will always get blessing of protection i believe unless there's some weird thing with block and and blessing of protection if they have a ton of buffs of all healing and no other immunities except for blessing of protection if you master spell you always get that buff off so right here you could have done that would have been great a lot of people don't really know that but if you press a a, a master spell here after we get our rapture shell on the mage we can definitely get this blessing of protect, protection off uh, but it does look like you try to spam your dispel don't get it unfortunately we md late but it looks like we missed the md what happens to our md Oh, so we, we don't get the MD, unfortunately. We we try to MD the Pally. Um, so we MD the Pally. Uh, I think it would definitely would have been good to try to get the, the Blessing of Protection off the Druid. But we MD the Pally instead, which not the worst thing. It would It's it's definitely going to backfire if he does press bubble um, while Master Dispel is on cooldown. But not the worst thing just because you do get, obviously, a buff with that. Definitely would have been nicer on the Boomkin though. We're getting our heals out once again. We still have Archangel, can't forget about that spell. We talented into it, so we have to press it. We get some shields out, and this is where, same thing. Kind of just falling out behind on healing. If we go back, we get our Rapture Shields out, our Rapture Shields end. Everything's good so far. We try to get an MD. We try to shield the Mage, great. Get a Penance on the Mage. And here, Archangel, Rapture. Or Archangel, Radiance. Great. Archangel Radiance would be fantastic here. So we get a Pence on him with our shield. We dispel his stun or his dots. We shield ourselves in a sec. And another thing too is, it's really hard in a lot of matchups, I would say, when you're playing a Dis Priest when you're fighting, especially Rest of Druids, it's really hard to kind of just chase across the map to get a fear on them. So if that's the case, you can always try to get a fear on the healer. But what we need to be doing is trying to make sure that if we're ever close to the DPS, that we fear the DPS. So right here, the Boomkin's here. We can just fear the Boomkin. We can fear the Boomkin here. We limit his pressure. Okay, we get a swap here. We get Cauterized though, unfortunately. Radiance as well. We try to shield. We block. Damning flash heal. Get a fear. Get a fear. Get a fear. He's trank up. Hopefully after this trank, we fear this guy. That'd be fantastic. Nice fear. So first fear of the game. It's a half fear, unfortunately, but we did get it off. And you shouldn't be afraid to press fear, especially if you're in a solo shuffle. You should not be afraid to right here, I would say. Go back to this spiller right here. We shouldn't be afraid as I've been saying the whole time about just getting our heals out and, and kind of trading our CDs. So before we pressed our last Radiance, pressing our Archangel would have been great. Um, if we did that, we would have, would have been a little bit more healthy. We would have more globals to put up our Renew again as well. Maybe get a Flash Shield that does more healing. And then while the Boomkin's here too, we can just press the Fear on the Boomkin. We can also press Fear on the Healer, even though it is dr here off this Dragon's Breath. But, you know, we kind of just fall a little bit too far behind. They get cauterized, they get blocked. They get a life swap as well, or a void shift. Damage heals here. Okay, we MD. The life grip. Okay, we Archangel. First Archangel of the round. Great. This is good. This is good. Better. It's better to have pressed it late than to not have pressed it at all. So we do press Archangel. Don't get the dispel. We had a life grip here as well, so... I definitely think a huge part of this, the biggest, the biggest, biggest, biggest reason I would say that we lost this round out of everything, because um, there's there's definitely, you know, quite a bit that I think could be improved upon, but I would say the biggest reason is if we go back to that first incarn that he did, that the Boomkin did, and if we just respected the cooldowns here, we have the Darkness down for the Demon Hunter, if we respected their damage by pressing our Rapture, by pressing our Rapture, by pressing our Archangel and just spamming out shields on our team as much as possible. I definitely think this game could have been turned around a little bit, but I do think that we we fell too far behind early on 
And then obviously once Dampening ramps up, once the Rhett gets wings again, he gets his Avenging, Avenging Crusader again, then it's kind of just too little too late at that point. So I would say the biggest factor for this game is just not respecting the CDs enough. And I think if we would have done that here, and then even later on in the game when the mage was kind of dying before they got their block, I think pressing our CDs still would have been great if we had an Archangel with just spam healing to kind of recover. Um, another thing is we want to make sure that we're trying to renew still. So if you do have the time or do have the global, you want to make sure that you press renew while your shield is on cooldown because when power word shield is on cooldown and you press renew or flash heal, you reduce the CD of power word shield by one second. I believe renew might be a half second or a full second still. I think it's full. But you do reduce the CD of power shield whenever you press flash shield or renew. And renew does do a decent amount of healing as well. So not bad to have uptime on it. All right, here we go. What is this? We have a warrior, arms warrior. Looks like an enhanced shaman. Shadow priest, BM hunter, rest of shaman. All right, here's our talents. So Here's our talents. We have Inner Line Shadow. We're playing Inner Shadow. It's going to be a fast game. So we're going to play Inner Shadow. Hopefully get some damage out, it looks like. We're out playing Harsh Discipline as well. So if we're playing Harsh Discipline, it's always good to make sure that we are trying to make sure we're getting Mind Blast out to get that extra Penance. Um, we'll get some, get some Mind Blast. Get, make sure we're pressing Solus. Make sure we're pressing our Smite as well whenever we have the chance. But aside from that, pretty standard on talents, I would say. More dot damage. We have fade as well. So we should be looking to push in to get fears, hopefully with fade. Or just making sure we're fading a lot to try and make make use of our uh, greater fade talent here. Oh, looks like it is a Ellie Shaman, actually. All right, so playing a little Thundercleave. Well, unfortunately, we're already split. Not sure why we're split here. I think uh, I think our warrior went one way, our shaman went the other. So that's always unfortunate when that happens. We get a shield on him. We get a renew on him. So always the same thing. So we get a shield on him with penance with our wheel and woe. We get a renew. Now same thing for the shaman. If we tab to the shaman here, press our renew on him as well. Then try to get a little shield on him, we'll be okay. But positioning off the bat is kind of unfortunate. I wouldn't say it's necessarily your fault. They kind of went opposite directions. Now the hunter is going for CC. We get a ground on the trap, great. Shaman's still out of line, feared now. He paints up. Penance. Hey. So even here, it's the same thing. Even though you have wheel and woe, we are still missing a bit of healing by using by using this, uh, by using our penance proc on the shaman before anything else. So we do get a paints up, he presses wall as well. In this situation, if since we don't have atonement, what we can do is we can either press radiance to put up atonement and get a lot of burst healing. We can press renew if we want to save our radiance or if we want to save our uh, radiance charges. We can just press renew and then we can go for the penance because he has atonement up then we can shield after so we want to make sure we have the atonement because we are losing healing by that we are losing healing by not having our atonement up uh so slight misplay i would say we get a shield now what are we doing here? it'd be so amazing if we got a fear here we get silence we're trying to purge perfect time here to just run in and fear Perfect time. They're all triple stacked on each other. You have a static field totem down. Perfect time to try to get a fear. We're kind of just healing. Trying to get away, getting our dot up, target the stream, trying to get our dot up. So huge thing that a lot of people do on priests is they, they put a lot of emphasis on their dots. Put a lot of emphasis on their dots. Looks like our video froze. So put a lot of emphasis on getting our dots out, which is obviously not the best thing to do. We want to make sure that we're just healing. You don't have to worry too much about always getting your dot up, spreading your dot over for more Toma healing, because most of your healing is going to be still from that shield and radiant spam. 
you're obviously going to have some atonement, especially if you're doing more damage or you do have a lot of dots out, but your rate, your dot can spread from pressing your dot, from pressing your penance. And then we, we just kind of lose a lot of time and a lot of globals by pressing our dot on everything. So pressing Purge to Wicked on everything is rough because we're kind of just spending a lot of time doing that and falling behind. So as you see, we are falling behind here. The Shaman's Wall Falls, our Pain Stuff Falls as well. So what we should be doing here is... Okay, so we get a Power Life and it's the same thing. It seems like a lot of priests do the same thing. We, we get our Pain up here. So we use our first Pain up in the, in the opener. Now what's good to do is we can just respect that we're dying we can respect that he's pressing power infusion on the priest and the hunter our walls over our first pain step is over we're kind of focusing a little too much on getting our dots out so we have to heal and the best way to do that the best way to recover is we just press rapture we just press rapture we shouldn't be too afraid to press rapture we shouldn't be afraid to press our dome as well everyone is stacked on top of each other so we go back here off this first CC chain, I would say in, in terms of what I think should have been done is got to make sure we heal on our Sham. So we get a shield on the Sham. Looks like we Radiance there as well. And they're all stacked on top of each other. So we get a shield on the Shaman. We Radiance the Shaman. He still has wall up. Now is the perfect time to get the triple fear. Now we run in and we fear all three of them. Hunter's slightly away, but we get the pets as well. So we run in. We get the fear, try to get as many people as possible. We get a lot of pressure there as well. And then we go back to focusing on healing. So what should have happened is we go, we run in, we get the fear. We try to focus more on healing. We can get a rapture out. And then obviously we are still, we're in this situation where we're all kind of dogpiled on top of each other. So it's not the worst thing to press dome. We're all here. Solo shuffles are always really fast paced as well. They still have power infusion up. Everyone's stacked, the shaman's dying, his wall's ending. We press dome. We press our dome, we press our barrier here, our power word barrier. Everyone's happy. We can rapture shield as well to, to give him more HP. We can press our penance there. We can maybe even cast and get a flash shield if it's possible because there's no interrupts out right now. Um, from the shaman, there's no silence. So getting a shield up first and then even, even trying to bait the hunter kick is not the worst thing. But just having more healing output here and putting up our damage reduction before they kind of turn back the pressure would be great. So we intervene and we use our last PS and we burrow. So unfortunately we stack a lot of defensive CDs with the intervene, with the burrow, our last pain sub. And a huge thing, a huge, huge thing that a lot of people seem to forget is that when you are playing the pain sub talent for the second charge, Every shield you're pressing reduces the cooldown of your pain suppression. So throwing out your pain suppression first is not the worst thing. Throwing out your first pain, su pain suppression is not the worst thing because we can always get it back by spamming shields. What can we spam shield with? We can spam shield with Rapture. So pressing our first PS in the opener was obviously not the worst thing. When we're still dying and our wall's over, that's when we can press Rapture. That's when we can press Dome. We can get some healing out. We can try to get the fear like I talked about. Then once we're a bit more stable, we have shields up. We can put, use a global. Let's say we have four globals to press, right? We press Rapture. We press Dome. We press Fear. Maybe we Rapture Shield again. And then we can press our dot. After those first four, we can press our dot. Then we can probably go back to healing. But getting focus and getting emphasis placed on healing is definitely something that it looks like uh, we need to do because we are kind of falling behind here from that. We are trading our cooldowns though, which is nice. So we are getting our cooldowns traded, which is always, always good, but trying to get more healing output instead of trying to focus on keeping up our Purge the Wicked on, you know, eight targets is definitely ideal. We get a shield here, flash heal. We use our flash heal proc, which is great. We get scatter shot into a trap. What happens here? We get feared. Looks like we will. Shield the shaman. Rapture. We need a rapture. We get a half fear. Great. Rapture. That's our rapture. Did we get stun? Rise in a fall. Do we get the swap? Oh yes. Everyone I've everyone I've seen today just they just get these clutch life swaps. Now we dome. So go back back to what I was saying. 
this always happens, I would say, um, when you when you see people try and try and learn in arena, trying to get better, where people think that you kind of you get into this habit of not pressing cooldowns until you're dead. When you should be pressing cooldowns, you know, while you're on the way to being on the floor, so to speak. So in this situation, we're kind of falling behind. We have rally up. We need to just press our rapture. We get right about off this trap. So right off this trap, we get feared. We will rapture. Perfect time. We press our rapture right here. Press our rapture and we spam shields as much as we can. We spam shields, we spam shield. We can even rebuff to make sure, we can rebuff our power word fortitude to make sure that the shadow priest does not, or the shaman does not get the shields off with their purges or the hunter obviously. So you're fighting a triple purge team. There's just a low chance that they would get that since you are gonna have your, your body and soul um, debuff on there as well, or your body and soul trash buff as well, with the speed that they can, they can RNG purge instead of the shield. But right here, we just gotta spam our shield. Spam our shield. If we do have the option, we can press our power word for it to rebuff. Or we could do what we did here where we got the fear. But if we get this fear, when we're healthy, everything changes. The game changes entirely when players feel like they're stable and they're safe. When players feel like they're dying, when players feel like they're falling behind, they're gonna lose the game. Everyone kind of changes up how they play especially when you're playing fast paced games or in, in a solo shovel format where the games are really fast, people change up how they're playing when they look at their health and they see that they're not stabilized, right? So we can get our rapture here off this, off this uh, fear that we will. Everything's gonna be nice. We're in a good position. Our shaman can focus a lot on damage instead of trying to focus on, probably trying to pay, play defensive. But if, in this situation, we can just try to get more healing out and then the shaman will, will obviously be able to stay aggro, stay offensive and get damage out. Because as you see, if we go back here, if we go back to back here while we're dying, the warrior presses rally because he sees that we're dying. So the warrior presses his trinket, he presses his gladiator's medallion, he presses rally. The shaman presses earth shield on himself, tries to kite and then tries to go swift away and then tries the healing surge. So all of these things, he ends up getting kicked as well. So all of these things are happening because we're just kind of dying, right? We're kind of falling behind. Everyone's looking at HP bars, seeing that we're, we're struggling. We're probably gonna lose this round soon. So they're trying to do everything they can to live and they're playing differently because of that. Where if we go back to this fear, even before the fear, when we go back to the scatter trap, if we press our rapture, since rapture does last longer, we can press our Rapture right about... Right about even here. So even here, our PS ends. And because he doesn't have, because he has Fear, but we have a will for it. And because he only has Scatter Trap, they don't, they don't have their Hex, they don't have their Stun, they don't have their Silence. We can press Rapture beforehand and still get good value out of it. But we obviously, you know, we get trapped, we get feared, and it's the same thing. We will this fear, Rapture. Immediately Rapture, everyone's fine, we're happy, people are high health, we can Rapture, we can get another Radiance out, and we can kind of go back to getting damage out. So instead, we fall behind here, his Sun comes off CD, his Silence comes off CD, our Rally's gonna fall, we luckily get this clutch swap, which was great. Good awareness there to just understand that we have to get the swap off. We get the swap off, he misses the silence with his chain. We press dome. And, you know, unfortunately it's the same thing where we're kind of just... Let's see what happens here. I think we might die, get a full fear trinket. So unfortunately it's the same thing where we, we kind of just get to this point. Our opener was definitely rough. We went opposite ways. Our Shaman went left, our Warrior went right. We went right with him, but our Shaman was so dying, so we lined us Shaman, unfortunately. Uh, but the biggest thing this game, the biggest reason I would say that we lost this game is simply just not keeping up our healing and trying to stay aggressive. So we lost this game uh, for two reasons. I think we had a really, really good opportunity right about here 
I think we had a good opportunity to get the triple fear. So we had a good chance to get a triple fear. We probably could have saved this pain sup as well in that situation. So right about here, when they're all in the static field, we had a good shot to press our fear. We obviously have the the first pain suppression on the shaman. The shaman walled over top of it, which is unfortunate. Mistakes happen. Sometimes people overlap. But you know, it happened. We moved on. We're in a good spot to get a fear. We're still getting healing out. But I think we're trying to get our damage out instead. Um, and then it looks like we maybe thought about doming. And then we kind of ran away. We got our dot out multiple targets again. And because of that, those four or five seconds that we spent there, we fell behind and we panicked. We have to use our second pain suppression. And we still don't have the triple fear. So in this situation, if we go back to that part of the game, I think this is where you could have swung the momentum in your favor by getting a fear and by hitting our shields and hitting our rapture. And if we did that, we wouldn't have had to press our, our last pain suppression most likely. If we got the fear there and we got the rapture and maybe even pressed our, our, our powered barrier on top of that, Instead of rapturing, we could have had the rapture, or instead of uh, pressing our last pain suppression, we could have easily gone away from this part of the game with our shaman being full HP, our warrior doesn't have to press his intervene there. We don't have to use our last pain suppression. Our shaman doesn't have to press burrow as well because he's scared. And we could have swung the momentum back in our favor and probably got some pressure here. I also think at the end of the game, before this last CC chain came up, it's the same situation where once we got out of this fear with this will of Forsaken, we should have pressed Rapture. We still had it. You know, let's say we, let's say this game goes on the same way, right? And we get into this situation again. It's still ideal to make sure we are pressing those cooldowns. So getting out of this fear, pressing Rapture here would have been amazing. And I think that obviously we did get a half year, which was good. It was unfortunately kind of too little too late. He was already, you know, three seconds from DR as well. It was half as well, um, but we did get a fear, which kind of gave us a little bit of breathing room. Um, but everything kind of just piled on top of each other, right? We kind of just lost this game, I would say, because of momentum. And we just lost all of our momentum from the start of the round. And I would say the biggest thing is just, just making sure we're getting our healing out and make sure we're getting our cooldowns out faster. And if we can do that, I guarantee this game would have gone a lot differently.